We are deeply honored to welcome a true Fender Farm Sanctuary and the animals to the stage this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Cory Booker. of applause for Morrissey that you didn't get to use, so you're giving them. It's like, all right, we'll let Booker have it. <laughs> um, I, I cannot tell you uh, what it means to be in a room with this incredible collection of individuals who are, in some ways, to be honest, going against the grain, not just of American culture, uh, but of global culture. Uh, it reminds me in many ways of the stories my parents told me. I was a kid that grew up after the Civil Rights Movement with two parents who were very involved in that movement and told me incredible stories about people going against the grain, trying to stand up and change a horrific reality that was going on in this nation. They believe that so much of what the mission of humanity is Indeed, the mission of the ideals of this country is to expand compassion, to expand love. My parents echoed the words of some of the greatest civil rights heroes to me all the time. They used to say to me, in the words of Martin Luther King, that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. That we are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a common garment of destiny. I was raised as a kid that said, my parents would tell me that you cannot forget where you've come from. My father would look at me walking around my house in this nice, spacious New Jersey home uh, uh, with more teenage swagger than any of your children have. And my father would look at me and say, boy, don't you dare walk around this house like you hit a triple because you were born on third base. You, you're the beneficiary. You are the beneficiary of extraordinary love. You are the beneficiary of compassion. You are the living manifestation of a conspiracy of love. But what my parents would challenge me with saying you can't pay it back when it comes to issues of justice, righteousness, mercy, and compassion, you can't pay that back. You've got to find ways to pay it forward. And they for to me to find people of like minds and spirits and energy and join them uh, in a larger cause that helps people to understand that we've got to raise the moral imagination of this country, that we've got to prick the consciousness of others to get them to care as much for the people sitting around them in their tables as we do for the people in the kitchen washing the dishes we just ate from. <laughs> Understanding that we have a collective destiny shouldn't just stop at uh, other human beings. It shouldn't just stop at food service workers. It shouldn't just stop at people. It should go beyond that, that this destiny, this interwoven destiny that we all share is also about our planet, about our environment, and about animals as well. And so I tell you this, that I have parents that taught me to trust people. Don't surrender to cynicism about people. Cynicism, cynicism is a refuge of cowards. It almost says that you should wash your hands of responsibility to take action because there's nothing you could do to change it. Well, that's just not the case. In the United States Senate, I, I feel happy. A friend of mine joked with me after I became a vegan and said, screw the fact that you're the fourth ever elected African American to the United States Senate. You're the first vegan ever in the Senate. That's In the Senate, it's just working with my colleagues to let people understand what's really going on. Because I have faith in this country to call the king again. He said, what we will have to repent for in this day and age is not the vitriolic words and violent actions of the bad people. It's the appalling silence and inaction of the good people. And so, and, and 
And so I know uh, that we have enough good people in this country, on this planet, that if they knew about what was going on in industrial farming, if they knew the damage it was doing to our environment, if they knew how poor people often are even more adversely impacted by this, if they knew the challenges it's causing to our health, if they knew all these things, that we would see more revolutionary change. In fact, the people who are working against us understand that, and that's why they're doing things like passing ag-gag laws to try to make sure that we don't see and know what's going on. And so that's what's so amazing about this gathering and about Farm Sanctuary. This incredible organization that, in reflecting movements in the past, know the importance of expanding the moral imagination of our fellow citizens, of pricking the consciousness of this country, of revealing the truth and the beauty and, and the glory of our animal friends. And so I am inspired by this, but I tell you what, there's a couple sitting at my table, uh, these two individuals who uh, we are honoring tonight, and I'm excited to introduce their video, uh, but I am just so grateful for them uh, and their activism. I was taught as a kid that, that the, the greatness of an individual should never be judged, never be judged by the heights that they attain. It should never be judged by personal accomplishment. It should be judged by a person's willingness to do for others. That service, service is the measure. Service is the measure with which people are great. And so that's whether it's a woman on a bus who is humble of statue, stature but does, refuses to get up, she is a great person. And it's also when a person from perches that are seen by millions still is passionate and concerned, as the Bible says, by the least of these, that is greatness. The Stewarts are amazing individuals, and I am so proud tonight to be able to introduce this video. And I will say this one thing, I had to change, us politicians, we have few go-to jokes. And I, I, I used to have this joke, which is the last time I'm going to be able to tell it, but I used to say, uh, when I came home as mayor, hard day's work, when I felt beat down by the world, uh, I would come home to my empty apartment and uh, uh, biological experiments going on in my refrigerator as a bachelor. <laughs> And I used to say that I would curl up on the couch uh, and hang out with in an intimate uh, menage with some of my closest friends. And I used to tell people that those friends were Ben and Jerry and John Stewart. <laughs> but I'm a vegan now. And unless... So until Ben and Jerry's come out with a favorite, favorite flavor, <laughs> I will tell you this right now. And honored that the stewards have come tonight, that they are living uh, the great ideal of service that was a reason why I am here, that they are part now of this incredible conspiracy of love that continues our country and our growth in compassion and love. Thank you very much.